and we will go ahead and get started. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Modern Agent Blueprint. We are here with Daphne Quay, and she is an amazing YouTuber, and she is going to talk to us today about all things YouTube and how you are generating, what is it, 85% of your business from YouTube? Amazing. So I want to hear about this because this has been on my goal list and it's been on my vision board for years to do YouTube in general. I'm trying, but I want to hear from the master. So I'm going to just give it right over to you, Daphne. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't have like a formal presentation set up. I'm more, um, I, I do have some things I want to share, of course, uh, but I'm, I'm, I prefer to do more like a conversation. And as we go, if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. I know we're doing Q and A at the end, but, uh, like I said, I love conversations and I always like these things to be kind of a two way street. So, uh, yeah, let me just start with how I started the channel and why, uh, I started my YouTube channel in late 2020. Um, it was, it, I know we were in the middle of the pandemic, but it really didn't have much to do with that. Um, I just, I felt like I was having a lot of the same conversations with people. Uh, so let me back up. I live in Austin and we have a really huge IT base and we have a lot of people that relocate to Austin for different IT jobs. So we have, uh, Dell has a headquarters here. Apple has two campuses. We have Samsung, Oracle, Facebook is kind of in and out, Google. I mean, I could go on, but we have a lot of people that relocate to Austin. And in 2020, we had a huge surge of people that were coming to Texas. And I was having a lot of the same conversations with home buyers over and over about different neighborhoods and things to do and where should they buy, et cetera. And I just thought, there's got to be a better way for me to get this information out to the masses instead of just having the same 60 minute phone call over and over and over so that hopefully they could get this information beforehand. And by the time that I get with them, they already kind of have an idea of what, what to do. So I had this idea for a YouTube channel and, um, I really, I really wanted to make sure that I was going to focus on what I was good at, nothing else. So, I made a list. What am I really good at? I love being with clients. I really enjoy negotiating. I love being in front of the camera and uh, just being with people. I did not want to waste my time recording video, fidgeting with lighting, trying to figure out audio, editing, uploading, none of that. That was not my forte. I can do it, but I'm not great at it. And honestly, it's a waste of my time. So with that, I thought, okay, this is my column. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm going to do. I found a video guy and an editor and somebody to manage the channel um, for me. So, and, and that's what, and I had two guys doing it and that's what they were really good at. So I had to build a little team around it. Uh, we started doing the videos. They, the channel probably took a couple months really to take off. And by take off, I mean, get calls from leads and clients. Uh, I think one thing that is important to realize when you have a YouTube channel about real estate in your town, you're probably not going to have a million subscribers just because it is such a niche thing. So subscribers don't always mean phone calls and leads. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, so the channel started growing. I started getting more clients and uh, really the channel just kind of took off from there. Uh, today I have, a, I'd say a pretty similar setup to what I did when I started. It's a lot more, it's a lot more, um, I guess, organized and zipped up than it was. And the process is a lot more streamlined. Basically what we do today is my video guy comes to my house, uh, in my office here, and we'll just shoot a bunch of video all day. We'll probably do anywhere from like six to eight videos. So we batch our videos. I send them to my editor who is overseas. He edits them, we post them, and then they go out into the interwebs. Um, yeah, let me show you guys my page currently. And then I'm, I'll show you my channel and kind of what, what that looks like, just high level. And then I'll share with you what the outlines of the videos look like and what the whole process is like. And then I'll show you some tools that I use as well. So let me share this. So I have a quick question for you. Yeah, so 
at what point did you actually like hire somebody out? Was it like right away? You were just yes. like, you know what? Let me just hire somebody and do this right. Yeah. I, from the get-go, I wanted to do it correctly. Um, I was, I mean, I've been in real estate. This year is going to be in November is going to be 12 years. So in 2020, I was already a seasoned, seasoned -ish agent. Um, I was doing really well and I could afford it. Luckily, I think there's other ways to do it. Probably more price efficiently. If, if someone's like a newer agent, um, but yeah, I just, I really didn't want to waste time with trying to figure out, you know, the algorithm and editing and all that. It's, I think it's important to get really good people that are already good at what they do and let them flourish uh, without getting in the way. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so this is the channel. It's called Living in Austin, Texas. At the time, there were not a lot of realtors on YouTube. And now if you look up living in Austin or living in Cincinnati or living in Detroit, you can find a million different channels. It's not unique. <laughs> it's yeah. It's just kind of a basic, uh, I think YouTube title name for realtors these days, but this is our channel. I really try to focus on doing, uh, high quality videos and being super honest. We don't have to dip, can turn off the volume. Uh, but yeah, I want to make sure they're entertaining. I want to make sure that they're educational and high quality. One thing I will say too, is I had my demographic already pretty much pinned down of who I wanted to work with. There are realtors I focus on like first time home buyers or veterans. All of those are great demographics. I wanted to work primarily in a higher end market. So a lot of these videos, a lot of the conversations that I have with a camera are similar to the conversations that I have with like higher end clients. Uh, most of the clients that I get are looking for homes anywhere in like the 800 to about 1.5 million ish range. So it's not like I've got a new client every day. They are a bit more rare, but it is higher, higher price and lower volume. And that's something I really enjoy. Um, I found that that's been a really great demographic to work with. They're super educated. They already know what they want. Most of these clients already have bought and sold homes at least a couple of times. So they understand the process. And because they've been following me on YouTube for a while, they've already built a relationship with me. I don't know who they are fully, uh, but by the time I get them, they just call me and they're ready to go. So there's not really any sales pitch that I'm having to make uh, because like I said, they've already built a relationship. Alrighty. So one thing that, uh, so let's see, I have, I guess this year will be pretty much four years that I've had the channel and I'll be honest, it's, it can be it can be a bit of a grind because it's like, uh, how many videos have we done? 232 videos. Okay. So in four years, 232 videos, I aim to post something every week. Um, if not every like eight to nine days, more or less, and coming up with new topics and coming up with fresh ideas does get, it, it gets challenging and being excited about talking the same neighborhood <laughs> can also get really challenging. So uh, one tool that I really love using is called TubeBuddy. Um, have any of y'all heard of this? Yeah, cool. I have, yeah. I read some book, Karen Carr's book on YouTube, and she talked a lot about TubeBuddy. I downloaded it. I don't know how it works or what it does, but it pops up on my screen every time I search something. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so I don't do this portion of like the optimization with my videos. Uh, again, I have somebody that does it for me. Uh, but I think it's really important to have just kind of a high level understanding of how this works. So I recently had to uh, cancel my subscription. There's a whole thing that I had to deal with, but so I'm, I don't have like the full version right now, but I do have just kind of the basic stuff, which I think is honestly enough to give us an idea of how this works. So when I'm looking for titles, like I said, it can be kind of a grind coming up with new videos and new topics to talk about. But um, one of the things that's really important is I like the keyword explorer. So basically two buddies connected to my channel or anybody's channel. There's another one also, sorry, called uh, Video IQ, which is just as effective and just as great. So when I'm coming up with titles, sometimes I'll do like a Google search to see what's trending right now. Sometimes I'll just pull an idea out of my head and see if it sticks. So let me just give an example. Um, 
Let's see, best ice cream in Austin as a title to see what comes up. I've not done a video about this. Oh no, what? It used to give me, oh, son of a gun. <laughs> now, okay. now you're gonna have to subscribe again. <laughs> I know, that's, I mean, I need to. Um, I'm not gonna do it the second because that's gonna take a minute. But basically how this works is you would put in a title uh, that, that you want, right? Like you've got a video idea that you want to talk about. Best ice cream in Austin. And TubeBuddy would give you a rating from one to a hundred to tell you how good or how searchable and uh, how effective that title would be. Uh, now I put this title here this way on purpose because I figured TubeBuddy would give me like a decent rating. Um, the more specific you can be for the particular channel, the better. So if I had to guess, I would guess that TubeBuddy would give me a rating of like 70 for this, which is pretty good. Uh, but I know if I were to get more specific, best ice cream uh, places for families in Austin, Texas, 2024, that would probably get me a much higher rating, closer to like 90 or 95, which is likely the title that one would go with to get more views and optimize the video, et cetera. So that's one way that I come up with uh, video title ideas to try to keep it fresh. Um, and then one of the other things too that, let me see, sorry, I'm trying to share my screen. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, stop, share, bear with me. So one of the other things too that is really important, um, I know I know a lot of other realtors that do YouTube as well. Uh, I've seen a lot of folks will just once a week just sit in front of their camera and talk about whatever video that they have, which I think is fine. It works for them. I could not do that because I am also very ADD and I would just kind of ramble on and I probably wouldn't even stick to it. So personally, I do prefer to have one or two days a month where my video guy comes over and we just knock it out. I drink a lot of coffee, lots of energy drinks. We do lots of jumping jacks, push-ups, just to keep the energy up and um, get some quality content out. So I'm going to share my outline. Uh, so you can kind of have an idea of what we do. So uh, yeah, so I searched all of these in TubeBuddy to see how searchable and how in demand these titles are. And I do this outline, of course, for myself. And if you guys watch my videos, a lot of times you'll see I've got my computer on my desk. I don't have a script, but I do have notes. Every now and then I will have like a small paragraph there that I narrate to the camera and we'll just put in footage of like me walking around downtown or talking to a client or something. Uh, but generally I just have bullet points because I think it's important to talk about what you know, because if you talk about what you know and love, it, it'll it transfer on camera and it'll be easy to, easier anyway, to keep keep going and uh, be genuine, which is super important. So let's let's look at this. This was a hot topic. We've got what the NAR settlement means for you. So I did this one with one of my girlfriends who is also a realtor and she also has a YouTube channel. Um, and this was basically our outline. I would do my intro and basically I was just like, yeah, explain what the NAR settlement was and what that looked like. Um, then I do my hook, uh, where I say, hi, I'm Daphne Quay, boss lady realtor, blah, 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 blah. I ask people to call me call to action is really, really important. It does not need to be very long. It doesn't need to be super detailed, but just remind people that they can call you. Uh, and then we go to the body of the video. In this particular video, we talked about how we did real estate before the NAR settlement. Uh, I think we can all, because it was like 25 minutes ago, we all remember clients would call us, say like, hey, I want to look at these houses. And we'd go show them the houses and that was it. And then maybe towards the end of, or getting closer to negotiations, we might bring up a buyer rep agreement. Um, so yeah, so, and then we outlined our process, uh, the details of what this new buyer rep is and what it means for home buyers. And again, we just have bullet points here uh, so we can reference as we're doing the video and then talk about it in more detail. Uh, each, each outline, 
will be of course different because each video is different, but generally it's a very similar outline. Um, another one we did, or I did top grocery stores in central Texas, uh, which seems kind of silly, but I, it's a very searched topic. So I did a video about that. If it's something super basic that I know really well, uh, and that I know my editor is going to know well, I'll just put like intro, hook, body, outro. So try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. And then <laughs> after, after we've got these videos, uh, filmed, I'm going to stop sharing. When we've got these videos filmed, I'll send it to my editor and I will send uh, the outline to the editor as well. And then as he has questions, he just reaches out. Um, yeah. And we, in, in that manner, we work together to get the videos ready and out on YouTube. And that's in a nutshell <laughs> how the process of doing my videos is. How are you coming? Am I okay? I want to make sure I wasn't muted. How are you coming up with like your topics? Are you like, are you using Chat GPT to come up with topics? Are you just think, thinking of things? Or are you, is there like, do you follow other people and kind of take inspiration from some of the videos they're doing? Like, tell me about that process for you. Really good question. So I don't follow anybody. Uh, I used to. There was a period where I was uh, kind of going through a transition with my channel. I was getting a new manager for it and I'm finding a new video guy. And I was trying to do a lot of the stuff myself. And I was like, I'll just copy other people that are having success. And uh, it was okay, but it, eh, it didn't really do that well. I think simply because my channel in particular, I'm very, very honest and very transparent with my audience. And I think maybe, I don't know, it didn't translate because I was like trying to do what somebody else was doing. All of that to say, uh, I don't follow other realtors on, on YouTube. I know who a lot of them are, but I think it's really important to just stay genuine to your content um, and be genuinely yourself because that's kind of the magic of these social media platforms that we have is that we use them to help educate our audiences and the public, and we can also be who we are. And then ultimately we end up getting like-minded clients who are nothing but a joy to work with. Um, so long answer, <laughs> long answer. I don't, yeah, I'm not like following other realtors on YouTube. Uh, but as far as how I come up with the content, I will take, yeah, I'll take a few hours. I'll take maybe five days in a month to come up with these video outlines and uh, these content ideas. And I'll just kind of start spitballing to TubeBuddy, sometimes chat DPT, but it's it's more rare. Uh, but I'll put it in TubeBuddy and do more Google searches to see what people are looking for mm -hmm. and to see what, um, what titles are getting the highest ratings. So for example, we were doing like the best ice cream places in Austin. That might actually be kind of a fun video to do. I don't know, I've never done that. If my two buddy was cooperating <laughs> and I could see what the actual score on it was, um, I mean, that's that's a video like I might consider doing. Uh, I also like to think a lot about like conversations that I have with uh, home sellers and home buyers in the moment. So right now, I think we a lot of us have listings and it's like, what do sellers need to know? And I've done a couple of videos where I'm just very honest with sellers um, and I go with the home, the home selling process during this down market. And that's probably what I would, uh, title the video and we would talk about your home has to be in really top-notch condition you've probably if you've got like old gross carpet that's got to be replaced you've got to clean the grout you probably have to repaint the house uh, we likely in Austin anyway I don't know how it is for you guys but in Austin I'm telling most of my seller clients we've got a list five to eight percent below market value if we actually want to get the home sold quickly hmm. so um yeah, I, I think taking taking pieces from conversations that we have with clients and really listening to clients to see what their questions are, because of course, if, if they're wondering or if they're asking, I know a lot of people are going to be asking as well. So yeah, I think taking just real life. How long um, do you, um, how long are your videos typically? Hmm. Uh, right now they are anywhere from about six to 12 minutes. Okay. Yeah, there's I think there's like some debate from different folks uh saying they need to be shorter, need to be longer. There was a while during the pandemic 
pandemic when people were watching Netflix and YouTube and like, just like binging. So all these platforms wanted to keep viewers on for as long as possible. For, so like a longer 30, 35 minute video was ideal. I believe, and I don't know this for sure, but I believe that just going back to normalcy now, that folks' attention span <laughs> has shortened. So I've, I'm finding a lot of success with like six minute, eight minute videos or so. Yeah. I wondered that because I feel like, I mean, there's always those long videos that I think like you get looped in, you want to hear the story or you want to, you want to like finish it out. But then I also feel like how long can real estate videos really be? You know, like we, if we, like, how long are you going to keep somebody's attention when mm -hmm. you're actually trying to, you know, talk about something? I mean, it's, it's hard, I think, to keep attention for somebody for that long. But um, yeah, I mean, I think like, uh, I feel like you're, timing probably makes sense. I mean, obviously if we have, like you said, you had a part or I saw in your thing, you had part one and two for the NAR settlement. So it's like, you know, keeping people interested in, in what you have to say. Um, I like that idea. I mean, I, I know that there's like some, there's a few agents in my area who do YouTube and um, not very many though, which is surprising. So like, and I have a question for you on this. So like you, this is a, a problem that I hear a lot and it's something that I've dealt with and I've heard on other, like in groups on Facebook and stuff. So like you're in Austin, obviously, I don't know really anything about Austin. I am in Ann Arbor, which is about 45 minutes outside of Detroit. I don't know that it would actually be considered Metro Detroit. It probably is, but I don't really want to sell to Metro Detroit right? So I want to stay in Ann Arbor, but I also don't want to limit myself. And I don't know if Austin is similar where like Austin's the main city, but like you sell all around it, or is it all one big thing? I don't know. But that's a question that I hear a lot of people saying like, because like selling, like I know Dallas is a good example of like Dallas has all its other like areas and it can take like, you could be on one area, side of Dallas on the other side. And it's huge. Like you might not want to sell on that side of Dallas, but you only sell on this side. So what do you suggest for people who want to have a channel like that? Like, I wouldn't want to say selling Detroit because I don't, I don't, I rarely do anything out that way. So what would your suggestion be like for a video title or even like a channel title? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, that's a really good question. Cause I think like, I just saw, I just saw a girl who actually I know who lives in my same area. She just posted in this group that we're in. She's like, I'm, I'm struggling because like, if I was in Detroit, I could say Detroit realtor, but we're not, you know, we're a solid 45 minutes to an hour outside of Detroit where she is. She's even a little bit further than me. So same thing to say, like, how would you, you wouldn't be able to say like Ann Arbor because she's 25. Well, she's like 40 minutes from Ann Arbor. You know, and it's like, we're just trying to figure out like how oh. to be like the realtor for this area. You know, Nikki, have you seen stuff like that? Or have you like thought about that? Cause you're kind of, kind of the yeah. same, I guess. I have. Um, and like Toledo is the, like what people know the location wise, but I don't necessarily want to do business in Toledo. I would rather do business in, you know, the suburbs of Toledo but if I say, you know, Perrysburg, Ohio, most people are like, where's that? Right. <laughs> right. So actually, I think a workaround. So I understand particularly what you're saying about Detroit not wanting to work there. Um, because you are in Ann Arbor, I think everybody's heard of Ann Arbor. Um, in Toledo, like you're not in Toledo, but I would still title the channel, I don't know, living in Toledo or you're Toledo realtor, whatever. Uh, but just doing videos about the suburbs or like the areas that you actually work in. Uh, so I'll show you, do it now. I'll just tell you, I don't need to show you. Uh, <laughs> so in Austin, it's, it's pretty similar. Uh, we have Austin, of course, and then we have a million little suburbs all around it. Um, Texas is huge. And like the main cities in Texas are gigantic as well. Austin's probably one of the, I'm using this smaller ones. It's not because it can be one hour from one part of town to the other. Did they just, did the screen just throw confetti? Did y'all see that? I did quotes. Oh, I think if you do like, what is it? If you do like two thumbs up, it will like, 
throw <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> what a trip. <laughs> I, I love the confetti. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, it's not gonna do it again. It's a long time thing. Okay. Um, anyway, but yeah, so I would I would still say Ann Arbor Realtor or living in Ann Arbor or everything Ann Arbor and just focusing on the areas that you want to work at. Mm -hmm. um, so best coffee shops in said neighborhood, uh, top schools in said neighborhood, uh, I don't know, cutest dog parts, whatever, like whatever you like, best gyms, you know? Um, and then I don't know, I don't know exactly how it is where y'all are at in Austin, especially in our suburbs, we have a ton of new construction subdivisions and they're huge a lot of times. And one could do just videos about the subdivisions. So we have this uh, really popular suburb north of, uh, somebody asked a question. Would you name the channel? What was the question? Uh, would you name the channel after the location? Hmm. I would I'd probably like the Metro. So let's, let's use Ann Arbor. So like Ann Arbor, Ann Ar living in Ann Arbor or everything Ann Arbor, your Ann Arbor realtor. Yeah, yeah probably because that's generally what people are going to look for. Um, and then if you get more specific in the subdivisions or the neighborhoods, but what, what I was saying uh, in, in Austin, we have a Northern suburb called Round Rock and Round Rock is pretty big and it's, there's some older, more established communities, and then there's a ton of new construction communities as well. And you could do really specific, very niche videos about these little communities, and that could give you content for months and months. Uh, and within those, you do like the subdivisions or like the little neighborhoods, and then again, coffee shops close to those particular neighborhoods and schools zoned for those neighbor, you know, it's yeah, if I was if I was to start a channel in a new city like that, that's probably what I would do. Yeah, I think like, um, I don't know. I feel like was that Brian that asked that question? Oh, it was. Oh no, somebody else. Sorry. Um. Oh yeah. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Brian, yeah. I would say like. Brian Lilly Holmes, be, like, because nobody's going to necessarily search Brian Lilly Holmes. Right. So my thought would be like, like I, so when, when I saw that YouTube was coming out with like handles, I can't, I went in right away and added like, I think I, I did like moving to Ann Arbor or Ann Arbor living or something. I think I, I did a couple different, one of the different ones. So I picked one that I thought people might search. Um, and a lot of my stuff, I do a lot of relocations. So I really wanted my channel to be more about like relocating to Ann Arbor or like not even necessarily relocating, but like just, I wanted to come up when people are searching for realtors in Ann Arbor. So like having all that stuff in there. So Brian, you might want to put something like, um, you know, South East Michigan or like Canton, you know, like for him, obviously Canton realtor or something like that to where people would look you up, like look up realtors in Canton and you're going to show up because they're not going to say Brian Lily Holmes realtor, you know, they're likely going to be searching for a realtor and you want to come up, <coughs> excuse me, in a search for that. Yeah. And, and another thing, I guess, adding to, to that point it's important to have a channel name that basically says what you do. Mm -hmm. So, right. Having your name, though it might sound and look nice, isn't necessarily doing your viewer a favor because, again, they may not know who you are. Unless yeah. it's like or something. Yeah. And I mean, I looked, so here's the other thing that, and I mean, obviously I'm a novice. I do, I have like four videos on my YouTube channel. Like our modern age of blueprint one is great. We have a lot of videos on that one, but yeah. my personal channel is not great. But what I have noticed is I was doing some research and I think this is really important to do. And maybe, maybe you've done this. Maybe you did this in the beginning. Maybe you didn't. I wanted to see who else was doing YouTube in my area. Who else has videos out there? What are those videos? Which videos are doing well? Kind of like seeing how I would need to kind of direct my channel on the what I want to do, you know, because there's and the other thing I came across, I, I'm jumping around a little bit, but the one thing I came across is there's really one guy who's doing a lot of videos. He does work my area, but he works mainly a little bit outside of my area. He does really good videos though. 
well edited, well lit, like the videos are really nice. And then there's another girl who's kind of robotic and she's kind of weird. So I'm like, okay, I could win out of her. Like if it's between me and her, I can do this. <laughs> like This is easy because I feel like there's, you're going to have people who are going to gravitate maybe more towards a man, maybe more towards a woman, maybe more towards like the titles of the videos, you know, or, you know, they're going to, you're going to have an audience one way or another. So trying to see what your competition's doing, how you can do better than them, I think is like all part of that like, I don't know, kind of experimenting and doing a little bit of research before you just dive in. I mean, there's no harm in just diving in either. But I think if you kind of can see what's out there, what people are already doing and how you can do it differently, I think that's a, a pretty amazing thing to be able to do. Totally. No, I totally agree with that, Nicole. And earlier you asked if I follow anybody. I don't follow anybody currently, but when I was starting the channel, absolutely. I was looking to see what, what other people were doing and what was working and what wasn't. Um, I'm actually about to launch another channel, uh, hopefully in the next month or two, it's actually a Spanish channel. Um, oh. my first language is Spanish and, uh, there's a very big underserved Hispanic demographic, especially in Texas. Right. So, uh, I have a partner and she's never done YouTube. Um, and we are, yeah, we are doing a ton of research and we're seeing what's been popular, what people are doing and being really conscious to put our own spin on it and be genuinely us. Uh, like I mentioned, I did some like copying sort of stuff earlier on and it just didn't, it's just, I don't know, it didn't stick. Uh, so I think it's just so important to absolutely do your research. That's a really good point, Nicole, especially uh, if you've never done it before and also just be very true to who you are because yeah. when people call you and they meet with you, you want them to have the consistency of being the same person they saw right. on, on screen. Well, and I think too, so I did this whole like class thing course with a person who's her, their job or like their, I don't know, course that they teach is on like showing your charisma and like your, the charisma behind who you are. Like, so if, so I'm a person that talks with my hands. So if I'm reading off a screen and I'm just sitting here and I'm reading a teleprompter and I'm not really summarizing or using my words specifically that I would use or the tone that I would use, because if you're just reading a screen, you're not going to have that tone. You're not going to have the, you know, like I'm our, I, like, I don't know if you could see me, but like, I'm talking with my hands the whole time. So if I'm not doing that and then I meet you in person and I'm like totally different than how I look in the videos, it's going to be a little jarring I think for the person but mm -hmm. if you are like I'll be the girl who I I feel is a little bit like kind of robotic she's like that in person too so it makes sense <laughs> she's being her authentic self she's just that's just how she is um and I think the guy does a really good job of of being who he is on camera as well but I know um do you guys know who Krista Mayshore is she is like a she's a real estate coach now that I said her name, she's probably going to come up in all your feeds. She's probably <laughs> going to show up all the time. She, she's the one who I, she had this girl come out to one of her conventions. I did her coaching for a little while and she had this girl teach. And it was really incredible to like, see this like charisma training, but basically a lot, Krista is a very like in your face, like, wow, like she's a lot of energy, but her videos are very, like very demure, very mindful, right? She's just very <laughs> like, quite like now we're going to talk about real estate today. Blah, blah, blah. Like, and it's just like, that's not her. And she actually pointed out, she was like, I think you need to redo all of your videos and you need to be more you because your videos do not look like you in real person and like real life. So you, while you're doing well in business, I think that you would do even better if you were more who you are. Like you were saying, like be authentic, have your own spin on things, all that. But it also comes down to the way you talk, the way you act, all your stuff on your videos. I, when I was trying to do scripted videos, I had a really hard time with just reading the teleprompter the whole time. So, and I don't know, do you use a teleprompter? Do you just go off the cuff, you know, have your bullet points, but then kind of just speak? It depends on the topic. So a uh, quick answer. No, I don't have a script. I definitely don't use a teleprompter. Uh, just for the way that the video videos are made and what's been working for the channel, a lot of times, uh, not a lot of times, every time I have a video, I will do a short intro paragraph, uh, whether I'm talking about a different city or a different neighborhood or things to do or the NARS stuff. 
Um, I'll have a quick paragraph just highlighting what we're going to be talking about. And I will read that, but I'll kind of practice that a little bit. And every time I do one of these scripts, it's very much worded in how I speak. So it comes off naturally, but then I also put footage over that. Uh, we call it B-roll. So it's not just me sitting at my desk telling you what I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's like, okay, guys, we're talking about this. This is what's going on. But then there's like other footage going on. So even if there is kind of like a slight robotic cadence to it, I think it's probably a bit more distracting because I've got B-roll on the screen. Yeah, I think it's a lot different if it's B-roll compared to, like Nikki does a lot of like, um, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Where you talk over it. Um voiceover voiceover, voiceover. Oh. thank you like nikki does a lot of voiceovers and i i think it's like it's gr great because it's not just like her talking to the camera it's like a lot of other stuff and then it'll like cut back to you know, like stuff like that i think is really good um yeah. but i do think like I agreed 100 percent. if you're gonna do a teleprompter i think what i what i have done in the past is i will look at the script and I'll read it out loud and then change the words. Like if I would not say um, whatever word it was, if I wasn't going to say that word, if that's not the way that I would form that sentence naturally, I will change it. And that mm -hmm. way it sounds more like me and not chat GPT or whoever script, <laughs> whoever made the script, it's going to sound like them, not like you. So there's a lot that you can do to really change that. And I think it's helpful um to like actually read it out loud before you actually start the whole thing um mm -hmm. how do you determine what's working when you're um searching other youtube youtubers youtubes mm -hmm. i mean i would okay. say view count wouldn't you like how many views and likes comments uh view and yeah definitely engagement uh and what is the topic and it, it can, again for real estate it's the views, the subscribers and the engagement is going to be less. Like one thing, for instance, that everybody wants is like health, beauty, beauty, fitness. And I think it's really easy for somebody that does it correctly to blow up quickly on YouTube for that kind of content. But when we're looking at real estate stuff, it's really important to look at the comments and look at the engagement because the video might have 1200 views. Somebody might have like, I don't know, 3000 followers or subscribers and they've got 1200 views, which neither of those numbers looks particularly impressive, but it's like, you still reach 1200 people and like, how, what are the comments? What are people saying? Um, now uh, kind of on, on the flip side of that, like if somebody only has like, I don't know, 300 subscribers and they're getting 17 views on their videos, like that's kind of an immediate discard. But if somebody's got kind of a couple hundred, eh, no, several hundred <laughs> to a couple thousand consistently, then that's probably a channel that you should keep an eye on and see what they are up to is what I would say. Yeah. I mean, I sometimes like I would just, and maybe you guys could do this too, is make a list. And maybe you've done this to yourself, Daphne, like making a list of um, frequently asked questions from your clients. Like I know you had said, like a lot of times you're answering questions that you are already answering for your clients. So if you can, I, I had this whole idea before that I was going to do a whole series of videos on like the buying process or the selling process. And, you know, hey, you're an appraisal. This is how appraisal works. And then I could like link them all together and say, here are a bunch of videos. Like your appraisal's next. Here's a video on it. And then you have one, you have it on your YouTube. Then you can send it off to your clients too. And it's kind of getting like double duty. But it's also helpful to like go into, I think all the stuff like throughout the whole process. If you're just trying to think of videos you can do right off the cuff, that you don't know, practice videos, if you will, going through the buyer process or going through the seller process is a great way to start. And then from there, come up with better topics and other things that you can really like build on, but you could build out, you know, 10, 20 videos just on the processes that we go through. Absolutely. Yeah. And every, for instance, like every year I'll do process of buying a home 2024. Oh no, we have the NAR thing process of buying a home with the NAR settlement 2024. Uh, and then you can, and you can, and I'll, I'll even say in the videos, guys, like this is just high level. I'm going to do a follow-up video explaining X, Y, Z in more detail at some point. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, just like you said, you could definitely use those topics to lengthen it out and create more content. I think it's also, I love that what you're also doing with putting your dates 2024, because mm -hmm. there are so many times where I'm looking up something 
Like, let's say I, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to resize a Facebook banner yeah. 2024. Like you have to put the year in because mm -hmm. otherwise you're going to get stuff from, you know, 2017, that's not going to be the same as now. So if you're putting in those years, I think that's also a great way to search because people want to know what's happening now, not yeah. two years ago. <laughs> you're totally right. And people look at like, uh, when I'm looking, I use like recently, I've been using CapCut for something. Um, do y'all know CapCut? Yeah. Cool. So, and I'm, I'm learning it and it's awesome, awesome application, whatever. Anyway, uh, but to look on how to like, I don't know, what was it? I lost the audio for some clip and I needed to recover it. I found something from 2021 and I was like, this is too old. This mm -hmm. is no longer Yeah, around. I mean, all, all this technology changes so fast. So you kind of have to have that like date in there. But I think that's smart. And I wonder, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. If you put it in your title, will it still search as well as if you put it in your caption and not in the title? Do you know? You put it in your title. Uh... Like title versus caption. Do you know that it would make a difference? What do you mean by caption? Like in your description. Sorry, your video description. Oh, like if I think you were to put, both. should you do both, you think? I was just yeah. wondering if you didn't want to put it in your title, if it would still be searchable in your description. I would. I would. Uh, one, because people want real-time information. And two, it allows you to make more content later. Because if you already made the process of buying a home in 2023, and here we are in 24, and you haven't done a video yet, then it gives you yeah. license to get another one. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think one of the, one of the things, another thing I want to mention too it's like YouTube, YouTube is how I get my business. 85% of my clients come from YouTube. It's important to mention that that is what I focus on. Um, I'm starting, I'm starting this other YouTube channel and we're doing an Instagram link to that. And those are the two things I'm focusing on. I don't make phone calls. I don't make cold calls. I don't do door knocking. Um, I definitely keep in touch with my past clients. I'm really good about just checking in with them and maintaining those relationships. But if but these other platforms are what I'm really good at already. And they're what I've done a lot of research on. So I don't ever want to be distracted and waste my time with other random stuff that somebody else might be really good at and awesome for them. But that's not the direction I'm taking my business. Um, mm -hmm. So, And I think it's really, no, I don't want to say I think. It for sure is extremely important to be very consistent with all of it. I look at YouTube as a part-time job. If not, I would say almost full-time job because we've got to get a video out every week. I've got to get my outlines done. I've got to make sure these topics are relevant and that people are searching. Uh, and at no point do I just want to be in front of the camera and be rambling on about something that I hope sticks. It's too expensive. There's too much at stake to not fully do your research and not be fully committed. Um, if a new realtor is, you know, just gets their license and they're just sitting around waiting for clients, you would tell them like, go door knocking, do open houses and do it consistently. It's, it's the same thing here. Same thing with mailers, same thing with farming, anything that you do consistently and well, will get your results. And this is definitely one of those, one of those things. This is way more my speed of things. I just need to actually dedicate the time. And that's that I think that's where I get in my head about, you know, it's like, well, you gotta, gotta film and then you have to edit and then you have to do this and then you have to do that. And so I get all in my head about it, but I mean, it makes sense to just hire somebody who can edit the video. I mean, it doesn't cost that much, but let me ask you, like, what would you say the average cost of a video is and time? Like, so how long? start to finish from starting your outline or let's say starting your research to the video being posted. What is your timeline? Mm -hmm. in, like Go in on. a perfect, like normal, like one video. Yeah. Uh, I'd say probably if I'm really buttoned up and focused, uh, an hour and a half. Okay. Or now, now we're waiting for the editor to turn it around, right? So it's like, I've done all my research. I've done the outline. We've recorded the video. I've sent it to the editor. Usually it takes them about three to five days to edit it. So my portion is like an hour and a half. Um, now I do it a little bit differently again than probably other, other YouTubers do. Um, I've got my list of six videos and we just knock them out. Uh, so when my video guy comes over to, to my house to do to record video, uh, usually takes about five hours to do six videos or so. 
And once I've got the outline or once I've got like the titles down, um, I'll do the outline. That doesn't take more than like 20 minutes, if that, again, if I'm focused and have had yeah. plenty of coffee for the day. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've, I know a couple of the realtors that do it and they'll, they'll shoot it. And it takes them a couple hours because they keep fumbling. It's like, we all fumble. Like, it's not like I'm that good. Like we all fumble. I cuss a lot. And I'll tell my editor when I'm like <laughs> recording the video, I was like, no, nah, that was stupid. Take that out. That's bull crap. Like, don't, don't put, put, put that in there. Let me try that again. And then sometimes I get frustrated because it's a crappy take. And I'm like, dang it. Uh, okay. Cut. I got to go get more coffee. You know? So these are, these are real things. And, and, um, we can, the struggle is real and, uh, it just, we kind of have to push through it. Um, but yeah, the, all of that rambling and ranting on to say, yeah, if you're very focused and very buttoned down with it, it can take about an hour and a half, maybe a couple hours, depending on what the video is about. Um, and you mentioned too, like you get in your head about it and you overthink it. And I think all of us do, whether it's something for YouTube or making cold calls or posting something on social, we all get in our head about it. And it's so important to know and just go in with the expectation that it's going to suck at first. You're going to be awful. Um, and you, most people don't like how they sound. They don't like how they look. The lighting's bad. The angle's bad. I look too fat. I sound whiny, whatever. We all have that. And eventually you just kind of get over yourself and you check your ego and say like my, my message and the mission here is so much more important than my whining voice. Like, let's just put this stuff out there and somebody's going to learn from it and it's going to help somebody. It's what is, what is it? Uh, it's better done than not at all. Right. Like you can't, it, it's better just to get it out there and do it. I mean, obviously you want it to be professional, but like it, nobody's going to care. Like we're, we're our own worst critics in a lot of this stuff. I feel like. Absolutely. And I, I have this song that I sing my, my boyfriend, uh, he owns a business as well. And we have the song that we sing to each other and it's sometimes good enough is all you need. Like, it's like, well, it's not perfect. Good enough. Let's go. <laughs> um, and sometimes that's what you need just to kind of get you to the next level and build your confidence until it comes out really good. And you're like, well, gosh, darn it. I'm quite good at this. And that gives you motivation to continue on and flourish. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like anything, like once you start seeing the positive, you know, like the feedback coming back, are you getting those clients calling you and you're getting like the, the, you know, the outcome that you want, it's just like in the gym where you start seeing results all of a sudden, now you're going to start being more, more motivated to do, do it often, do it more. Um, somebody asked in the comments, where do you find your um, editor? Do you, do you use Fiverr or where do you find them? That's a good question. Uh, my story with the editors. So I'll, I'll start with Fiverr. Fiverr is very iffy. Um, going back to my Spanish channel. Um, I found somebody that I thought was really good. And we had like 10 videos in the queue with her. And then she ghosted us. <laughs> so I've actually, I've got to find somebody else. I'm going to try Fiverr again. Mm. Um, so wish me luck, you guys. That's the, the hardest uh, part is finding good help, right, Nikki? <laughs> and that, yeah, that's the case for literally anything and everything. Um, my current editor that I have for my for my channel, that I, my established channel, uh, he is actually in Iran. And my boyfriend is Iranian and his, so is his best friend and they work together. And I mentioned in passing to his best friend that I was looking for an editor and he's like, I can get you someone great in Iran. And he did. So that was a stroke of luck. And it was just the fact that I was talking about it to somebody. Um, and I've been with his, uh, my editor's name is Nima. We've been working together almost two years. I feel like he's like a part of the family. Like I talk to him all the time and he's like, yeah, I, I know him well and he knows me well at this point. Um, so stroke of luck. I don't, you know, if, if I do have to find a new editor now, I'm trying Fiverr. It's very okay. I don't, that's the best answer I have. Do you have them, like, so I've heard of people who will ask for like examples. Like, do you, have you ever sent somebody a video and said like, edit this, you know, for this and like, see what your work is before I hire you out or is that kind of like not a thing? Definitely a thing. Definitely a thing. Uh, I, I Yes, I did that a couple times, several times actually with this Spanish channel, which is how I found the girl that ended up ghosting us. Uh, 
I did talk to a couple other other editors as well. And yes, we sent them some raw footage. I said, here's my current channel. This is the vibe. Uh, just we need this in Spanish. So yeah. So it's it's having to go through that process yeah. again. Yeah. And I will say, I know another realtor in Austin. He's got a super successful channel where he just does home tours. And he he did that. And he mentioned he had to go through like 50 trials of people editing raw footage until he found the editor that worked best hmm. through Fiverr. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's a hard thing. I mean, I tried hiring out some stuff on Fiverr and like, it was like a couple things. And it's just like finding the person who understands what you're going for, like the vibe you want or like the style you want. It's really hard to find that. So it is like trial and error. And it sometimes you're just like, oh my God, better done than nothing, you know, or whatever it is, whatever the saying was, we just said, but, um, then at the same time, it's like, mm, but I kind of want somebody really good <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's just understanding, but it is a process. Um, like anything, you know, when we started real estate, most of us probably weren't super good. And with time you get better and YouTube, like I said, is another job. And it's like, you just get better with time and the team that you build around it just gets better and working with an editor it's a relationship so the first few videos i could honestly take several months might be one way but after a year or two they know you you know them you understand how to communicate and the videos are a better reflection of how you are as a person and how you run your business um let's see Gerilyn asks so you mentioned not using a teleprompter do you memorize your dialogue so sometimes i do have uh, like bits that I read off that I don't memorize, but I do think um, in the, what do you call it? Let me share my screen again. Mm -mm. Yeah, so uh, we have bullet points. Um, I'll sometimes, depending what the topic is. So this video here is on the NAR settlement. Uh, I have bullet points and sometimes I have longer descriptions of what we need to say. And sometimes I'll actually read it off the computer. Uh, and for this particular video, there were a couple instances where I say like, hey guys, I'm actually still learning what's going on with this NAR stuff. So here's what I've got, blah, 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 blah. Um, and there's a way to format the video. So it's interesting. And even though you're reading, it's still, it's still you. Here's another example of kind of the opposite of that top grocery stores in central Texas. Uh, central Texas has like a love affair with grocery stores, um, <laughs> which is why I did this video. And that's one of the things that we talk about, but HEB is one of our main grocery stores. I know a ton about HEB, so I don't need to have a ton of bullet points. So here I have, I'm going to talk about HEB. Here's everything that I know. Here's the history. Here's some B-roll. Here's some photos of me at HEB, whatever. Central Market is another big grocery store we have. Same thing. I know a ton about Central Market. I might pull up the website and talk about it a little bit to the camera. You know, So do I memorize? No. Um, I think... This is part of the reason why it's so important to talk about things that you not only know, but really enjoy because you can keep the conversation going for longer. And then people can see that and they feel like they're basically feel like they're having a conversation with you about said topic. I okay. have in the past when I've done videos, I was reading off a teleprompter trying to get like, you know, the, the data or whatever it was, whatever I was trying to, to say out there. And then by the time I had done like four or five takes, I had already memorized it. So I was able to just go off of, you know, my memory on it. But I do think it's helpful to be, you know, to be able to kind of go off the cuff and yeah. talk about the things because it's going to come across a lot more real, a lot more relatable, a lot more. Um, it's just like it's more consumable. I feel like when you're being more like real. Totally, totally. Um yeah. And relatable too. Definitely. Who does anyone else have any more questions? We're coming up on a noon now here, our time. Is any, does anybody have any other questions while we have Miss Daphne on? Nobody. No oh, <laughs> okay. amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Daphne. We really appreciate you being on here. Um, hopefully we can have you back on again and we're going to go stalk your YouTube page now and see what, what videos you have out there so we can get some inspiration and uh, we appreciate you joining us.
Yeah, super happy to. Wish me luck with the Spanish channel. Maybe we can do another follow up once it's launched and I can let you know how that goes. <laughs> yes, that sounds amazing. That's I think that's a really smart idea. That's a great idea. Um, I know that we have agents all the time here who are like, do we have anyone on our team who speaks Spanish? We have clients. And I think it's really like, that's a big deal. I, I know a guy who literally only works with Spanish speaking clients and that like, he just gets them all. They all just yeah. refer everybody because they're, they're so limited in who they can work with because there's not that, uh, understanding, you know? No, there's, it's a huge market and they are hardworking demographic and they just need a little guidance. So that's yeah. what we're here for. Anyway. So Good luck. <laughs> all you. right. Well, I'm sure your channel will blow up. So maybe next time you'll be talking to us from another stage or something. <laughs> I hope so. I'm sure it will. All right. <laughs> all right. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for joining us. And we'll be posting this video on YouTube later today. So you can check out our modern Asian blueprint YouTube page, and then we'll be back next week with another amazing guest. Woo. All right. Bye. Bye.